Hello and welcome to Datacasts. We've taken a bit of a detour over the last couple of videos to learn about Git, but let's return now to the code we wrote prior to that. You may remember that we wrote a script that downloads RDF files from the British Library's website, and that these files contain information about books newly added to the British National Bibliography. This is all well and good, but what we discovered when we downloaded these files is that they arrive as .zip files, with the RDF files stored within them. I'm sure you've extracted files from a zip archive before, maybe using WinZip or something like that. Well, we're going to do this programmatically in R today, all in just a couple of lines of code. Now, before we go any further, uh, I'm going to create a new directory, and I can do that over here by clicking on New Folder. Uh, and I'm going to call this raw data, which is where I'll be storing all of my data for this project. And within this raw data directory, I'm going to create another folder, and I'm going to call this one zipped. Uh, and this is where the zip files will be stored. And then I'm going to create another folder here within raw data, and that one is called unzipped. And you can probably guess what goes in there. So to make sure that our zip files are stored in zipped, we need to modify the download.file function that we wrote in an earlier video. Uh, and we're going to wrap the uh, dest file argument uh, in a function called paste zero. So we just put target files in parentheses, and that now becomes an argument of this function called paste zero. Now, paste zero um, is a base R function that allows us to concatenate strings with commas separating each of the strings we'd like to concatenate. So in this case, um, my second argument is actually going to be target underscore files, uh, and that gives us the uh, names of our files. But in front of that, I need a path to the folder that we just created. So I'm going to put my comma in there, which is um, what is going to separate these strings. Uh, and then in quotation marks, uh, let's type the, uh, the path to that directory. So that is raw data slash um, that's actually zipped uh, and then another forward slash. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run all the parts of this code except for the download.file function. I'm not going to run install.packages because I've already installed tidyverse. I don't actually need that anymore, but I'm going to just run everything else. So that loads up the tidyverse for us and creates these two variables, target underscore URLs and target underscore files. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, highlight um, this paste zero part of my code uh, and then I'm going to hit command and enter which is it's just going to run what I've highlighted. So I'm, I'm just going to run paste zero with uh, these two arguments that I've passed to it. Um, so let's see what happens. So you can see down in the console what has happened is paste zero has returned the full path to each of these zip files that we will be downloading. We haven't downloaded them yet but we will be. Um, and this is uh, where they'll be found, raw data slash zipped, and then each of the files. So now if I run the final line of this code and actually go ahead and download the files, and we can see down in the console that it is uh, in the process of grabbing those files for me. And then over here on the right hand side, I'm in my zipped folder, and I can see here are those three zip files. Marvelous. So here's a puzzle. How do I confirm that the files I just downloaded are where I expect to find them using only R? So if I couldn't actually see the files here, how do I know they're actually there? How do I write something in R to check for that? Well, there's a function for that, and it's called list.files. Unsurprisingly, this lists files, um, and the first argument it accepts will point it towards the directory whose files it will list. So down here, if you write out the function list, Dot files, and then for the first argument, we're going to write the path to the data. So that is raw data slash zipped. Now, if I go ahead and, and just run that, down in the console, we can see it does actually return the three files in this directory, the three zip files. So that's that's really cool. But what if we had files with different extensions in here as well, say the RDF files? Well, if we didn't want to return anything else uh, beside the zip files, we can supply a pattern as an argument to list.files. Uh, and this pattern is essentially a regular expression telling list.files what to look for in that directory. Um, so I'm going to pass this pattern. So pattern equals, and the regular expression here is dot zip and then a dollar sign. So it says the pattern that you're looking for, uh, you're looking for files that end with dot zip. That dollar sign says um, ends with dot zip. 
if I run this again, we get the same result because we only have three files in this directory and they are .zip files. So that's great. Now there's one other argument from this function that we need to concern ourselves with. Right now, this just lists the files with their extensions. Um, but as we'll see in a moment, I also need the directory path to these files. So for this, we can call a third argument um, and it's called full.names. And we're gonna set that to true. This is uh, by default set to false, but we're setting this to true. And this tells list.files to include the full path names uh, when it's listing files. I'm going to assign this to a variable because I know I'm gonna call this again. And when we are calling a bit of code uh, later on, then it's good to create a variable. And I'm gonna call that zipped underscore files. And if I run this line, that now stores this into the zipped.files variable. If I highlight zipped uh, underscore files and then run that, and down in the console, we can see we have the full path to each of these, these files, which is exactly what we want. So that's great. You can probably guess the name of the function for unzipping files. That's right, it is simply called unzip. Um, so we're gonna look at the help document for this. So down here in the console, we know how to do this. We do question mark and then unzip. Now over here, uh, I can see the arguments this accepts. And the first argument it says is gonna be the path name of the zip file. Now in our case, we actually have several zip files. So what do we do here? Well, let me walk you through our solution to this by introducing a new tidyverse function from the per package, which is called appropriately enough, walk. The idea behind this is simple. The first argument is a list. So that's our list of zip files stored in zip underscore files. And the second argument is the name of a function that we apply against each element in that list. So if I look at uh, the help document for uh, walk, you can see here that it's given us actually information about a bunch of different functions because they're all sort of related. They all basically do, they do the same thing where they um, accept, um, as we, we can see down here, they accept .x, which will be a list or atomic vector, and then .f, which is a function, um, and what it does is apply this function against each element within this list or vector. Um, other functions that do similar things would be um, L apply and V apply and so on. But the unique thing about walk is that it doesn't return anything. It just does the job quietly. Uh, if we wanted to return the result of applying a function against a list, then we wouldn't use walk, but we don't need to return anything here. So walk is fine. Okay, so here's what we need to write then. Let's write out the function walk. The first argument um, is going to be this, this dot X. This is our uh, list of zipped files, zipped underscore files. The second argument is the function. So we're going to use the unzip function on this list of zipped files. And then the third argument is X DIR. Uh, and this is going to be equal to raw data forward slash unzipped. So XDIR is the directory where we want to store these unzipped files. Now what's going on with that third argument? Um, this, th this third argument isn't actually an argument of walk. If we come back and look at the help document, we can see it has dot x, dot f, and then this dot dot dot. If I scroll down, this dot 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 says that it uh, refers to additional arguments passed on to the mapped function. So xdir is actually an argument from uh, unzip, not walk. And if we wanted to pass more arguments from unzip, we could just simply keep adding them. So walk first asks for our list, which is zipped underscore files. Uh, then it wants the uh, the function that we're applying against each element in that list. In this, this case, that will be unzipped. Uh, and then we can just add any further arguments from that function. And we've just called the xdir argument here. Unzip does have other arguments, but this is the only one that we're interested in. Okay, so let's run these two lines of code now. I noticed down in the console that it's not returning anything. It's just showing us the two lines of code that we've run. However, um, if we come back over here and go into the files tab, and if we navigate back to raw data and then go into the unzipped folder, lo and behold, here are the three RDF files that we've just extracted from the zip files. Not bad for two lines of code, huh? So we're making really good progress here. Uh, we now have our RDF files via the zip files we downloaded from the British Library's website. But what the heck do we do with these RDF files? Well, let's consider that in the next video. See you then.